Hello, everybody, and welcome to Excel Video 280. I'm Nate Moore. I just booked airfare to speak at MGMA's annual conference in San Antonio this fall. I hope to see you there. The three presentations, all kinds of interesting things. I'd love to see you in San Antonio. I've thought about where to go next after doing the basics. There's folks that say, hey, do macros or arrays or do these kind of formulas or whatever else. And what I've decided to do is kind of go back to where we started. The first 30 or so videos I did were on pivot tables. Well, it was three years ago, and I've done almost 25 presentations across America on different ways to use pivot tables in a medical practice. And when I first recorded those videos, it was Excel 2007. Obviously, Excel 2010 has come out now. I'm After those 20-some presentations, I'm a little bit smarter than I was then about pivot tables and some applications. So what I've decided to do is go back to pivot tables, start with Excel 2010 and all the tricks that have been added in 2010, some of the tricks I know now that I'm more familiar with that I wasn't when we started doing these videos. And for a guy that calls himself pivot table guy, really focus on pivot tables again for a little while. So that's where we're going. And what I want to do today is take some sample practice data and create a pivot table, show you the two questions you've got to answer and a couple different ways to select the data that might be helpful for you. And hopefully along the way, you can see why I call myself Pivot Table Guy. They're a really, really powerful way to analyze an awful lot of data concisely and quickly, and I hope you'll find them helpful. So that's where we're going, and I have some sample data here that we're going to do a pivot table with. If you go to the Insert menu, pivot tables before 2007 were harder to use. The interface wasn't as good. They were a little, a little more geeky, if you will. They're a lot more mainstream now, and... If you're familiar with restaurants, how you know the high margin appetizers are at the top left corner, the first thing you see on the menu. In a similar way, in the insert menu, the very first thing you see now is pivot tables, starting in 2007 and continuing in 2010. Pivot tables, the interface is better, they're powerful, they're good enough to kind of get top billing here in the insert menu, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on pivot table. And there are always two questions to ask. Where's the data you want to analyze, and where do you want to put the pivot table? Now notice the trick that I did. I didn't have to go select this data, and the reason I didn't is because I'd clicked inside data that was very clean and organized. It's easy for Excel to tell if I come out here that, hey, column J and K are part of my data, L and M are not, and if I go in and down, very easy and clean to tell, hey, rows 14,999, 15,000, 1501 are good. After that, it's easy for Excel to tell, so I can click any place in here and pivot table, and Excel will go figure out A1 to K15001. If you don't have that and you need to go select it, it's not hard. What we'll do is we'll click here, and instead of doing that, I can always go here and say, I'm going to click this cell, Shift, the End key, E-N-D, and Right will take me over there, Shift, End, and Down. Sometimes you have to do it more than once. We'll highlight the range as well. I'm in the same place, A1 to K15001. When I hit enter there, then the, the only other question is where do you want it? And I'll just put it in a new worksheet and I'm a happy guy. That, my friends, is a pivot table. And once you've got the pivot table in place, the other thing I want to talk about in today's video is one of the tricks as I've talked to people over these 20 some odd visits across the country is how do I know where to start? Okay, I've created my pivot table. What's the most important question? How do I, what's the next step? How do I go from here? I have collections data over here. If we go back, control home to the top. Here's the date and the amount, the payer, the payer type, and all this kind of stuff. And the most important thing that I want to pivot around, the most important thing that I want to analyze a bunch of different ways in the course of this collections of all this data, it's really this amount field. So I'm going to drag amount down to the values area, and that's how I'm going to start my pivot table by focusing on what's the most important field that I want to look at. I want to look at the amount of the collection by state, by payer type, by referring physician, by location, doctor, all these different fields. And then the last trick for today's video, we're going to be doing this an awful lot, to format this seven number. So you know, is it 700,000, is it 7 million, 75 million? What is that number? From this drop down, value field settings and number format. And when you click on number format, what you're going to say, well, Nate, why don't I just format using these tools up here and uh, why do I have to jump through these hoops? And I've just had much more success with the pivot table keeping the format if I go through value field settings. So I'm going to do currency and get rid of the pennies because it's a big enough number. And I'm not going to worry about what happens if my collections are negative. 
and leave that alone, leave that alone. And we're well on our way now to a pivot table. Seven and a half million dollars. We're going to look at this seven and a half million dollars by these different ways of uh, slicing and dicing that data. We'll start that next time. Hope you enjoy coming back to pivot tables. I hope it'll be really valuable for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you.